Hello, and welcome to part four of our lecture series on the endocrine system. And in part four, we're going to focus in on the parathyroid and the adrenal glands. Now, we just finished up uh, in part three with an overview of the thyroid glands. And so in the diagram, uh, in the, hist um, the micrograph uh, to the bottom right, we can see thyroid follicles within the thyroid gland. So we've got these circular aggregates with colloid to the center thyroid follicular cells kind of forming that epithelial lining above them. The parathyroid gland is going to be a structure that's located adjacent to the thyroid gland. And so you can see that both in the anatomical drawing to the top as well as the histological uh, image at the bottom. So we've got the thyroid with the thyroid follicles and then we've got the parathyroid gland to the bottom right. Within the parathyroid gland we're going to have three types of cells. Uh, the chief cells are going to be the most numerous cells. These are going to be uh, peptide hormone secreting cells. So they're going to have the, the normal appearance, slightly basophilic cytoplasm, uh, rough endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus. We're going to have some oxyphil cells. In this case, the oxyphil cells are going to be these larger uh, pinkish cells that you can find kind of scattered uh, throughout this slide. Uh, the oxyphil cells are going to be larger, less numerous than the chief cells but they're going to be acidophilic because they've got a lot of mitochondria uh, found with them. Uh, over time, with age, uh, the number of oxyphils are gradually going to increase, but we're always going to have more chief cells, more of the peptide hormone secreting cells than we're going to have of the oxyphil cells. Uh, early on, we've got a few adipocytes that are going to be scattered throughout the tissue, uh, but again, with age, uh, we're going to see involution of the organ, and so what's going to happen is that the number of adipocytes, the number of white fat cells, the, the, the extent of kind of that chicken wire appearance is going to gradually increase and take up about 50% of the, the structure within the parathyroid gland. If we focus in on these chief cells, um, the chief cells are going to be involved with the secretion of parathyroid hormone. Parathyroid hormone, or PTH, is uh, an essential hormone for life uh, because it's involved with increasing blood calcium levels. Calcium, as we've talked about in a variety of systems within the body, is uh, used for regulating a lot of activities. It's used for muscle contraction. It's used as a, a regulator uh, of uh, release of exocytosis, uh, neurotransmitter release, things like that. So it's going to be important that we maintain the proper level of calcium within the bloodstream and within the body. What happens uh, is PTH, parathyroid hormone, is released in response to low calcium levels. And so if calcium levels within the body, calcium levels within the blood start to decrease, we're going to have release of the parathyroid hormone to try to bring this back up. Uh, it's going to do this in a variety of ways. It can do it relatively rapidly by uh, increasing uh, phosphate excretion and by increasing phosphate excretion that exchange mechanism is going to within the kidneys bring calcium in but in exchange we're going to be excreting phosphate within the kidneys so calcium that gets into that raw filtrate is going to be reclaimed within um, the uriniferous tubules of the kidneys uh, in response to PTH uh, we're going to increase calcium absorption within the intestinal mucosa so bring in more calcium uh, in the diet, in essence, relatively rapidly in response to PTH. PTH is also going to stimulate bone resorption, and so it's going to activate uh, osteoclasts, the cells involved with erosion of bone, the remodeling of bone, uh, and in doing so, it's going to liberate the calcium which is stored within the bone. But this takes a little bit longer than what could occur within the kidneys or within the intestines. Keep in mind uh, that this is a vital uh, hormone for regulation of life, uh, so we need to maintain calcium levels at uh, an effective, uh, effective, effective level uh, within the body, within the bloodstream. So PTH is going to be continually synthesized um, by these chief cells within the parathyroid gland. Uh, what's interesting is that if PTH does not need to be released, especially if the calcium levels are fine, uh, the membrane-bound structures with parathyroid hormone are going to be broken down through a process of chronography. And so it's being synthesized, but if it's not used, it's going to be broken down because we're going to be continually synthesizing this within the chief cells of the parathyroid gland. 
The final endocrine organ that we're going to look at in this series of lectures are going to be the adrenal glands. The adrenal glands, or suprarenal glands, are going to be located sitting atop the kidneys, uh, one on each side. And the adrenal glands are going to be composed of an adrenal cortex around the outside and an inner adrenal medulla. Um, the cells within the adrenal cortex, a little darker staining region, are going to be characteristic of steroid hormone secreting cells. So they're going to have lots of smooth endoplasmic reticulum involved with a lipid metabolism. They're going to have lipid droplets. They're going to have mitochondria with tubular cristae. Again, remember when we talked about cell biology very early on in this course. Uh, most mitochondria have shelf like cristae for the production of ATP. Cells that have mitochondria with tubular cristae are going to be involved with steroid hormone uh, synthesis and secretion. If we take a look at the adrenal cortex, again, what we're going to see is an area that's going to be sitting underneath a dense connective tissue capsule. And we're going to have three distinct zones, or three distinct regions of cells. We're going to have the zone of glomerulosis, this kind of uh, glomeruli of cells, this cluster of cells up there towards the top. We're going to have the zone of fasciculata, which are going to be straight fascicles of cells down through the middle. And then the zone of reticularis is going to be a network of cells down towards the bottom as we get closer to the adrenal medulla. The cells of the zone of glomerulosa are going to be sitting underneath the capsule and they're going to be involved with secreting mineral corticoids such as aldosterone. So it's going to be roughly about 15% of the adrenal volume sitting directly underneath the, the connective tissue capsule and you see arch clusters or glomeruli of these cells. Again, these cells are going to have the normal uh, appearance, the morphology of a hormone secreting cell, a steroid hormone secreting cell. So the cells are going to be clear, or maybe slightly eosinophilic, lipid droplets within their cytoplasm, lots of mitochondria, uh, extensive uh, smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And again, these cells are going to be involved with the release of aldosterone, uh, involved with the water electrolyte balance. Again, uh, aldosterone is going to be involved with controlling sodium resorption within the distal tubules uh, of the kidneys. Cells within uh, the zona fasciculata are going to secrete glucocorticoids, uh, glucocorticoids such as cortisol or corticosterone. Okay, this middle layer within the adrenal cortex is going to be the majority of the structure, about 65% of the volume. And again, zona fasciculata for fascicles. So you're going to be looking at straight cords of cells that are running perpendicular to uh, the organ surface. So they're going to be perpendicular to the connective tissue capsule around the outside. Again, relatively pale staining appearance that would be characteristic of cells secreting steroid hormones. Lots of lipid droplets. You might have a slightly lacy appearance uh, to the cytoplasm. Uh, mitochondria, still with, in this case with the tubular cristae, the, the characteristic mitochondria associated with uh, steroid hormone uh, secretion, synthesis and secretion. Lots and lots of smooth endoplasmic reticulum uh, within these cells. Uh, the cells in the zone of fasciculata are going to be secreting glucocorticoids, uh, and these are going to be important for controlling carbohydrate metabolism. Uh, it also has an effect that it can suppress the immune system response. So it's essentially in, in response to stress, you increase uh, carbohydrate metabolism, but you have the overall effect of decreasing circulating lymphocytes, which can suppress the immune response in uh, periods of extended stress. Then finally, we get the cells within the zone of reticularis. Uh, in this case, um, the image to the right, you look down here all the way down towards the bottom, you've got the zone of reticularis, this kind of network, an asmosine network of cells. And these cells are going to be involved with secreting gonadocorticoids, so adrenal androgens or sex steroids. They're down here right above these pale cells, which are going to be in the adrenal medulla. Uh, the zona reticularis is going to be the innermost layer within the adrenal cortex. It's sitting uh, essentially right above the very pale staining adrenal medulla. About 7% of the adrenal volume, so not really that large. And you're going to have this kind of network or reticulum of the cells. Uh, the cells are going to be, again, eosinophilic, uh, maybe a little bit more eosinophilic, more staining appearance than what you're going to see in the cells in either the zona glomerulosa, the zona fasciculata, and very dark nuclei. Uh, you can see a few lipid droplets, again, mitochondria with tubular cristae and, and smooth endoplasmic reticulum here. Uh, the cells of the zona reticularis are going to secrete gonadocorticoids, mainly dehydroepiandosterone. Uh, this is going to be a hormone that has a similar effect to testosterone, 
and that it has a masculizing or an anabolic kind of building effect within the body, uh, but it's much less potent. potent. Um, so it's, it does similar things to testosterone, but it doesn't have a lot of effect within the body. If we get down into uh, the adrenal medulla, we've got that paler staining region towards the center, and what we're going to have are two types of cells being present. The first are going to be chromaffin cells. The chromaffin cells are also called pheochromocytes, and these are going to be modified postganglionic sympathetic neurons. And so we take a look at them, they're going to have a large nuclei, abundant secretory granules, and they're going to be involved with synthesizing and secreting catecholamines, such as adrenaline and noradrenaline. Scattered in among these smaller chromaffin cells are going to be relatively rare parasympathetic neurons. And so they're going to be ganglion neurons. They're going to be relatively large cells, eccentric nuclei, uh, kind of a euchromatic appearance to the nuclei, distinct nucleolus. Uh, but they're going to be kind of larger and paler uh, staining in comparison to uh, the chromaffin cells. Now the chromaffin cells are going to be involved with the synthesis and secretion of catecholamines. And so the catecholamines are going to be norepinephrine or noradrenaline is the other term and epinephrine uh, or adrenaline. Uh, epinephrine and adrenaline are the same molecule, two different names for it. Uh, basically whether or not these cells release noradrenaline or adrenaline is dependent upon the blood, su blood supply that they uh, are exposed to. So the chromaffin cells, they're exposed to blood which is glucocorticoid poor. So essentially blood that hasn't picked up the glucocorticoids released by the zona fasciculata, or there's not a lot of stress within the body. Um, we have, so we have decreased levels of glucocorticoids are going to be involved with secreting norepinephrine. If we look at this in electron microscopy, these chromaffin cells are going to have larger, denser uh, cytoplasmic granules. In contrast, the chromaffin cells that are exposed to glucocorticoid-rich blood, so essentially cells that have picked up the glucocorticoids by the capillaries as they're passing through the zona fasciculata, are going to synthesize the enzyme PMNT, uh, phenylethanolamine and methyl transferase. It'd be easier to think about as PMNT. Basically, the PMNT uh, cleaves off the nor portion of the noradrenaline. So what you have left is the adrenaline. Uh, if you take a look at these cells uh, in electron microscopy, uh, they're going to have smaller granules uh, and they're going to have a dense core as opposed to an even denseness uh, within the granules that we would see in the cell secreting noradrenaline. And so this finishes up our lecture series on uh, the endocrine system. We're going to talk a little bit about the endocrine secretions associated with both the female and the male reproductive tracts in their respective lectures uh, coming up next. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at hoffmanj at arcadia.edu. Thank you.